Hello, I'm Brandy, and in this video we're going to be taking these two giant nightstands and giving them a fresh updated look. I got these off of um, OfferUp, and the top of them, the top of each one was a little bit damaged, uh, nothing critical, just uh, needed some sanding up there, but overall these were some really nice, heavy, sturdy pieces of uh, furniture and I was super excited to get to work on them. You could see in here there was some, I don't know what kind of gunk that was, uh, splattered about in one of them. Uh, the other one was nice and clean inside but um, other than that they were in really good shape so it was going to uh, be a task for sure but nothing too difficult. So the first thing I did was remove all of the hardware from each drawer as well as the hardware on the doors. I always store all my hardware either in a bag or in a box nearby um, just to keep everything together so I don't lose any of the screws or anything like that. Even if I wasn't planning on using the same hardware again, in this case I, I was planning to use it, but even if I wasn't, I would still save them because I may um, they may come in handy for a future project. I pried off these little emblems on the top in the middle of the drawers because I knew I didn't want them there. Um, they were a bit difficult to get off, but a little bit of elbow grease and I was able to um, get them popped out. I wasn't too worried about damaging the wood underneath because I was painting over it instead of staining. If I was planning on staining the drawers, um, then it, you know, that would have been a concern for sure, but I knew I was going to paint. so. The ability to fill any hole that was made wouldn't be a problem. I used a few tools. <laughs> um, I even went as far as getting out the hammer for this last little piece. Once I got off the doors, I went ahead and labeled them. I just put an R for the right door and an L for the left door just so I didn't have to guess later. Sometimes when you're um, putting drawers back in or putting doors back on, if you don't put them exactly how they came, um, they, can, they can be problems. So I always like to label those. The next step was to get to cleaning and I had to get this gunk out before I can scrub it all down. Um, so I just used this little scraper and I just went to scraping. I never really found out what the heck this stuff was, but it seemed to come off by just scraping it. So that's, that's what I did. came in with a vacuum just to get up all those little um, pieces of dirt and leftover debris from everything that I had just been scraping. Then I grabbed some Dawn dish soap and water, a sponge, and then a clean wet rag and I just scrubbed down uh, everything. Scrubbed it down good and then I took that um, clean wet rag after and went back through to wipe it all off. Dawn dish soap acts as a degreaser and that's what you definitely want to use um, whenever you're scrubbing down the furniture. Everything needs to be clean before you apply any paint or any product to it, otherwise all you're doing is trapping any 
um, dirt and nastiness underneath the paint, which could then affect um, the final outcome later. So I always make sure to thoroughly clean all the furniture before I apply any product. The next thing I did was get out my uh, Bondo and I was just going to Bondo over um, those pieces on the doors where I pried off those little emblems. So Bondo is a two part. There's a hardener that you apply to the actual Bondo. So you, I just throw it on a piece of cardboard, add a little bit of the hardener to it, give it a good mixing, and then I'm able to um, quickly apply it to where I want it. You gotta work fast with Bondo because it dries really, really quickly, especially the more hardener that you put, the faster it's gonna dry. Um, which is great about it if you want to sand in a short amount of time because in about 15 minutes it's fully dry. Um, I guess that kind of depends on how thick you put it on, but it's very fast drying. Then I just smoothed it um, onto the front of the drawers where I had removed those emblems because I had damaged the wood a bit there. While the drawers were drying, I brought out the nightstands to the backyard and I got some 150 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander here and I just went over the tops of them to get off the entire um, layer. This took a bit of time and uh, you know you just had to have I just had to have some patience, uh, work in the direction of the wood grain. Uh, because I knew I was going to be sanding it later. Now, if I was planning to apply paint, then I wouldn't really worry too much about the direction that I was sanding, but I knew I was putting on stain, so I took my time and worked in the direction of that wood grain. After it was all sanded down, it looked just beautiful. So I came in and dusted it all off and then I went back over it with a 220 grit um, sandpaper just to smooth things out to the touch. So I did the same process on both of the tops and they just came out absolutely beautiful. This one had a little um, marking inside of the wood but I wasn't too concerned about that because I was going to go for a slightly darker top, um, more of a gray so that would kind of blend right in so there was no concern there. The next thing I did is I moved over to the drawers, they were dry by now, and I hand sanded down um, where I put that Bondo on. And this took a little bit of elbow grease, but it wasn't too bad. It just took a few minutes to uh, sand it down smooth. I also did a quick scuff sanding over uh, the sides of the nightstands as well. And then I brought everything inside after I had wiped it all off and got all that dust off from the sanding. I brought it on inside and I was going to go ahead and put some painter's tape along the edge so that I can get to painting the base of the nightstands and I did not want any of that paint to get on the raw wood above that I had just sanded off because I was planning on staining that section. So I went ahead and just uh, put on the painter's tape all around it.
I also taped off the feet, the bun feet at the bottom. Those things, I couldn't for the life of me get them off. I tried to unscrew them and everything. I couldn't get them off. So I just taped them up and was going to paint them later on. So for this project, I'm using the bare chalk paint um, in the color Shoelace, which is kind of an off-white color. And um, I just really liked it. So I gave it a good stir for about a minute or two. Um, and then I poured it into my container so that I can get to work. So I really like to use the bare chalk brush. Um, you know, I can get all this stuff right at the local hardware store down the street. This chalk brush goes um, very well with this particular paint. So I just got to work here. I wasn't um, drowning my brush in the paint. I was only loading a little bit at a time and then um, and then just working it on in a very thin layer. I just didn't want to have to deal with any drips or anything like that. So just went a very thin layer and worked it all on. For the very first layer of paint, I'm not really worried about which direction <clears throat> uh, the brush strokes are going in, so I'm kind of just all over the place. As I apply the second and third coat, I will have those consistent brush stroke, um, you know, the, the direction in which my brush strokes are in. This is what it looked like after one coat of paint. And I can tell you, it was not pretty. But it's got to get a little worse before it can get better. So I moved on to the drawers. I actually um, went to sleep without painting the drawers on accident. And uh, so I did the drawers the next day. But um, I kept my brush in a Ziploc bag in the fridge so I didn't have to wash between coats. And that makes it nice and convenient. Um, I think I always preach about that on the videos, but um, so just applying the paint here to the drawers and then I moved on to the doors as well.
Once everything had dried, I did a quick scuff sanding with 400 grit sandpaper and then started to apply coat number two. And I had some little buddies that were hanging out with me and they wanted a little bit of attention, so here they are. On coat two and three, I was more conscious in the, uh, the direction in which my brush strokes were going just to make sure that they were consistent with how I wanted the finished look. After waiting for coat number two to dry, uh, we did that sanding in between, and then we were on to coat number three. I used a total of three coats. So um, again, just leaving time for dry in between, doing the 400 grit sandpaper um, sanding in between just to make sure to smooth everything out wiping it down with the tack cloth and then applying the paint
while coat number three was drying, I took the tape off of um, the top portion of the nightstand and I was ready to apply the water-based pre-stain conditioner. I just poured it into this little container and used this <clears throat> sponge to apply it. There's no rhyme or reason, um, but I still tried to go in the direction of the wood grain for the most part. Um, the wood conditioner really helps to even out the color when you apply the stain and it helps to prevent any you know, color blotching and so forth. So I just went ahead and wiped it onto the top of both of the nightstands let it sit for about 15 minutes <clears throat> and then after it had sat for 15 minutes I came back in with a lint free cloth um, I just used a stain wiping cloth and I just wiped off any of the um, excess that was left over before moving on to the stain So I decided to go with a stain plus poly um, for this project. I used it for a coffee table project um, before. I was happy with how that turned out. So it's a water-based stain and poly in satin. And this one had a gray um, tone to it. And that's what I was going for, that kind of white with gray contrast on the top. So I uh, just applied this in a very thin layer going the direction of the wood grain. <clears throat> because it's a stain and poly, um, I wasn't going to have to put a top coat, which was awesome, but also it just meant that the actual uh, application of it needed to be as perfect as possible. I let this dry overnight just because it was getting late and I was tired, but uh, an hour or two would have been fine. And then I came in with some 400 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out. Um, so I just went over that, was keeping an eye out for any imperfections while sanding, um, sanding that smooth. I was really not happy with the way that the sides were taking to the stain. Um, they were hardly taking the color and sometimes when it did take the color it was just blotching up really bad even though I did put that wood conditioner along the sides as well but I just didn't like how it was taking to it so I decided I was going to come in and actually paint those edges. Um, so I had some Waverly chalk paint on hand and I decided just to kind of do a mixture of these two colors to get something similar to what the top was going to look like just to go along that edge. So I used the chalk 
mineral as the main base. I just gave it a quick stir, poured it into this little um, container that I had, and then I added some of the Waverly ink color to it and then gave that a good whirl together to get a pretty decent color that I thought was gonna look um, really nicely and, and complement that top coat uh, stain as well. Once the color was nice and consistent, I was ready to um, paint along that edge. And I just used a smaller brush um, and was just kind of careful with trying not to get it on the top of um, the nightstand as much as possible and just trying to get the edge only. Um, and it worked out pretty good. I just did a very thin layer here and I uh, was happy with the way that the color was turning out. So once that had dried, I came back along the top to take a look at the edges and see if there was any bleed over from that um, paint that I applied along the edge. And anywhere that there was, I just went over it very softly and gently with this 400 grit sandpaper. And that really gave it that kind of crisp edge um, where there wasn't any leakage over onto the top. And I was really happy with the way that the color um, turned out you know it was a, a grayish brown and that was pretty much what I was going for on the top so it worked out you know, one disaster into something that uh, ended up working out good so I was happy with the outcome went over it with the tack cloth <clears throat> just to get off um, any of that dust before moving on to coat number two of the poly and stain Coat number two I applied um, pretty much the same way. I just went <clears throat> back and forth in the direction of the wood grain. The only difference this time is that <clears throat> I did not go over the edges because I had already painted those. Obviously as I'm going through um, with the stain there was some leakage along the sides that I just went back through um, after the fact with the paintbrush and kind of blended that into the paint that was there. It worked out pretty good. I repeated the exact process on both of the nightstands and um, once everything had dried I came in and started removing the paint just to see how crisp my line was. Um, there was a little bit of 
bleed through in some areas. Nothing super crazy, but you could tell um, that the line was not that straight. So I just grabbed a little brush with some of that shoelace paint and I came in for some tiny touch-ups. Once I was finished with the touch-ups, I let it dry for about an hour. Nothing crazy, they were just little spots that I was touching up. And then I wanted to go over and distress um, some of the edges of these nightstands. So I grabbed a 220 grit piece of sandpaper, I wrapped it around a sanding block, and then I was just going to go through some of the areas that I wanted to see that distressing um, and do it very lightly. So I picked some of the spots where um, there would probably eventually be some normal wear and tear edges that would get bumped or rub up against other furniture or people as they're walking by. Um, and then also some areas like on this rectangular portion here that I wanted it to kind of have some more depth. So I went in to those lines and, um, and did some distressing there because it just gives it some more depth and character. Then I went ahead and reattached the hardware for the doors. This was a bit tricky. Um, one of the doors was a little wobbly, so I ended up um, getting that to a fix pretty tightly and we got rid of that wobble, which was um, I was happy about, but uh, just screwed the hardware back in, threw the doors back on, um, and then got to work on giving some uh, distressing and definition on both the doors and the drawer as well. I wanted to use the same hardware that was, you know, the, the original hardware, but it needed to be updated. So I used this antiquing wax in um, aged silver. <clears throat> and this stuff works like a dream, I'll tell you. I got it off Amazon. You put a little bit on your finger and a little bit seriously goes such a long way. And you just rub it on. Um, I did clean this hardware earlier during the cleaning process of the um, nightstands <clears throat> and then so it's been sitting there um, for about a day just chilling so I um, just wiped off this antiquing or wiped this antiquing wax on to the hardware and it just really livened them up and gave them a new crisp 
um, look and you can really see it compared to doing it how it looks bef with the before and after <clears throat> then I took some of that antiquing wax and I actually came in and rubbed it onto um, these emblems that were attached to the door I thought it would give them some character as well and I had all that extra um, already on my fingers as it is so it's pretty simple just to wipe it on there As that was drying, I flipped over the nightstands on their back <clears throat> and propped them up. And I needed to do something about these um, little bun feet. Again, I think I mentioned it earlier, but these would not um, detach at all. I mean, I unscrewed them, I pulled them, I pried them, I tried to hit them. They wouldn't come off, so um, I just had to prop them up and then just paint them as they were in the air. And that seemed to do the trick, so I gave these a good... Um, three coats of paint as well, leaving just a little bit of dry time in between. So after those three coats have been put on the uh, feet, I flipped everything over and then I went over it with this wax, this bare decorating wax in a clear. And then I just grabbed a lint free rag and I just went over the entire piece with the clear wax um, as a protectant. Now again, the tops of the nightstands were done with the stain and poly so they already had their own or the tops already had um, their own protection with that built in poly. But the sides, I definitely wanted to make sure to give it some protection to cover uh, the chalk paint. And I find that this wax works really good for that. And you just rub it on um, and buff it off. And uh, it gives it that nice, very, very mild sheen um, while still maintaining more of a, a matte look, which is what I was going for. Once everything had dried, it was time to reaffix the hardware. So all my stuff was in this box um, that antiquing wax had dried overnight and I went ahead and just put all the hardware back on. So thanks for watching my video. I appreciate you taking the time. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Once all the hardware was back on, I went ahead and staged um, 
these two for pictures. So here are um, some of the finalized pictures for you. And at the very end of this, I will throw in um, the before picture as well so you can remember how far we came. And I was very happy with this. So again, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I hope to be coming out with new content weekly. So please follow along on my journey.